Okay, so these are east southeast striking normal faults. Uh, they're dipping off to the uh, north northeast uh, and down throwing to the north northeast as well. So effectively, the hanging wall is being is where I'm standing now, and that, that's been down thrown relative to its foot wall over here. And we can see that the normal faults have calcite mineralization along them and that they're fibers and that those fibers are indicating the actual slip on the fault and it's almost perfectly dip slip. In other words, the fibers are pointing straight down the dip direction of the uh, little normal fault planes there. The other nice thing about these faults is that they show how faults vary in their displacement along their strike. So because this limestone surface is the same as this one, so this is the foot wall, this is the hanging wall, we can see that the total amount of displacement is around about seven centimeters, something like that here. But as I trace it off in this direction, off to the west, it gradually dies out so that by the time I get over here, effectively there's no offset along that structure and in actual fact we've just got a little extensional vein here which we call a wind crack and the same happens as i go off to the east in this direction we can see that the dis displacement on the fault is gradually dying out until the surface has a continuity across it there's no offset at all and again just a little wind crack in there so this tells us something about the way that we think that the fault grows. So the rupture point, the initial point where the fault would have developed, would be somewhere close to the point of maximum displacement. And then the fault grows by propagating out. Um, and the final point of propagation is given by the two ends that we call the tips of the fault. And we need to think of this in three dimensions as well. So the same pattern of displacement would be occurring up and down in this direction. And we would have effectively an elliptical surface, which would be the tip of the fault going around in an elliptical sense where the slip on the fault dies out to nothing. We can see that there are several parallel faults here and for the most part they have the same dip so they're dipping to a, a direction behind me here so to the north and in this little area here we can see that the displacement on this fault is dying out to its tip at this point here and this fault which has a displacement of again about five centimeters six centimeters is dying out in this direction to zero in around about this point here and these faults are interacting in a little zone here where the limestone surface has a slightly different dip so it's actually dipping off in this direction and that's because the two faults are interacting in an area called a relay ramp and these are extremely important because they allow connectivity between different parts of if, if this were a large-scale example, for example, a big, sediment, a big sedimentary basin with the deep part of the basin here, they allow movement routes uh, into and out of that basement. So fluids can migrate and also sediment can be routed into the basement along these uh, small areas of slightly misorientated surface. Here, the dominant structures are dipping to the north but occasionally we see structures that are dipping the other way. So there's some nice examples up here where the dip of the structures is behind me now, which is to the south. And so these are relatively minor in number and in terms of the magnitude of their displacement. And so therefore we refer to them as antithetic faults. So there's a good example, it's a nice structure here, dipping this way. The strike is parallel to the strike of the main structures which is dipping down to the north. So we can imagine the antithetic faults and the synthetic faults being part of a conjugate system 
So in cross-section, it looks something like this, and we would infer from that that the sigma-1 axis would be vertical. And because these faults have silicon fibres on them that are almost pure dip-slip, we can say that the sigma-3 axis, the minimum principal stress axis, would be broadly perpendicular to the fault plane. So something like this, perpendicular to the strike.